Hi everybody, guess who again? Uh, it's pretty chilly here today in the UK. Nothing like what you're getting though, uh, Harold, so <laughs> I can't complain really. Uh, today I'll be doing a, a vampire steak, so nothing overly complicated there, just some spindle turning, but uh, I've got a friend uh, called Leslie who lives down south in a place called Reading. He's a massive horror fan and uh, he's got a huge collection of horror masks and you know he sounds a real really nice guy but you know he's got a similar passion to me and you know he's really big into the horror films and things like that so I, I said I'd make him a vampire steak because he hasn't got round to wood turning yet and making his own but he, he is sort of like considering it that's how he got I think round round to uh, watching the videos and things so if you watch this Leslie uh, this is for you mate so I'll get it turned and finished and uh, get it posted down to you so what I'll do is turn the camera off get set up and then uh, we can get going okay everybody we're at the lathe now I've just made a test cut make sure the tool rest was in the safe, right place and <clears throat> it was safe and everything so we'll get going now and we'll start roughing this down remember everybody face shields or safety glasses no loose sleeves and hairs tied back and just remember that safety is your job not mine so uh, use your own moral compass when it comes down to safety uh, but have fun that's the main thing that's what we're doing we're having fun and being creative so let's go Okay everybody, I've got it pretty much rubbed down into a cylinder now and then I've just been having a fit, oh I've put it in the chuck as well now what I've, what I've felt here is now they're not catches that I've had but there's some uh, cracks and inclusions there and uh, I did feel the start of something when I bought it in the shop but it's, it's sort of like progressed to something more so I thought what I would do is uh, just try and fill them now just just to stabilize them a bit so I've got some shavings here and it's something that I've heard off Stephen Ogle you know to try and fill gaps and things so what I'm gonna try and do is just get some get some wood pushed into those now this is going to be turned right down because this is this will be the point end of the stake so uh, I'll probably turn that away well I will do but I, I don't want getting you know to have a catch the wings of any gouge or something catch them so I'm just rubbing some sawdust into them and then what I'm going to do is just grab some super glue I don't know what viscosity this is but whether or not it's thin or medium You know I can so I hope I've got that in the right place. Let's get some accelerator now. Give it a blast. And I'll give that a couple of minutes to set up. Right, there's some glue in there now and wood, so hopefully that should just steady things up. I'm not bothered about it being perfect because it is going to get turned down I might not even get to that distance along the the oak but I'd, I, I feel happy with getting something in there just to to bolster it up right so what I need to do now is just start at the handle end and roughly work out 
where my hand's going to be. And then obviously I need to define the top of the stake and that will have a bead on there. Then there'll be the portion where you grip and then there will be another bead here and it's 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 all to to, to aid with the grip and stop your hand sliding up and down. So what I need to do let the tool rest about there. We've got a parting tool there. So I would be happy with about there. Turn the lathe off. Now what I need to do is set my calipers. You can see that. Okay, so they're slipping over there now. So if I just guesstimate something like that. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'll start tapering down the bottom portion of the stake. Uh, I don't want to do the top end here first because we'll leave some meat. Uh, so this portion that will be getting thin, uh, I'll just start tapering it down now and just go with what I feels, what I think feels right. Sorry, so uh, let's crack on. I'll start with the roughing gouge just to get some of the, the bulk down. So I know there's clearance there now. I can feel where I need to be starting, so let's go. Okay, well, I'm sort of like getting to the, the shape that I needed now here with this uh, bottom part. So I'm just going to get the scraper on it and just quite a lot of torn grain. So I'm just going to get the scraper on and see if I can just smooth that out a bit. Start taking down the handle portion now. I think I might have a go with the uh, carbide cutter, the square one, I think. What's that? That's pointy. Square. Loving it. There you go.
Okay, I've pretty much got the the shape that I want now. I'm going for some, some like almost like a needle. Uh, so something very sharp and pointy, really. Don't know how how do I best describe it. Something very stabby. So what I need to do now is just these these uh, beads is really round them over. So. Just where I'm going here now. So right. So what I'm going to do there now is just stop a second because I can just hear a noise. So, I'm just going to check everything's tight. So that's nice and tight in there. Sure that quill's nice and firm up there. Start it slow. Right, that appears to be okay now. So we'll just okay. Okay, that's not feeling too bad at all. I can get the rest of that with the sandpaper. Move along here now. Same. It's absolutely rock hard, which is a good thing, I suppose. It's going to be a, a vampire steak, and it's got to break through a chest. So, right, so I'm happy with that. Radio. So I shall just sand these down a bit more, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, I've sanded those two beads uh, just, to, just to smooth them out a bit, but obviously I'll be working up the grades now. So <coughs> what I need to do is part off the point end and uh, it's in a chuck and then I'll really give it a, so I like refine the point. So I need to get that. Like that. Feel. Yeah, that's me. Uh, my thin parting tool. So.
Okay, tail stock's out of the way now. So I've just got the round carbide cutter and I'll just take this bit off here now. Right, what I'm doing now is, I've, I've got a point on that, so I've just got some 80 grit, because this, this oak, it really is really tough stuff. So, I'm just... putting a point on the end now, but as I'm doing it, I'm working from the very tip and, and trying to shape it and whittle it with the paper really because I want it to have you know really good sharp points on it for, for Leslie. Okay everybody, I've just got the camera out of the tripod to let you have a look now. So, I've finished sanding now up to 600 and it's smoother than a smooth thing that's just finished first place in a smooth competition. So, the point's really, really good. Nice and sharp. I hope you're picking up some of the the grain and things in it. I don't know what the figure is like obviously but there you have it. So what I'm going to do now is seal it all and cut it back and then uh, apply the finish. So I'll get back to you after I've done that. Alright folks welcome back. Well here I have the finished vampire steak and uh, if you watch this Leslie or when you get to watch it <laughs> I, I'm not teasing and unfortunately you know uh, this <laughs> this coffin that it's in I'm just using that to display uh, it is earmarked for sale with another vampire snake I've made so uh, but I'm just showing you <coughs> maybe you know uh, a potential way of displaying it in your home when you get the steak so it's it's an oak coffin it's velvet lined and uh, just let me feel in here now. So this is your vampire steak there. So I hope you like it. And uh, it's got a lovely, a lovely feel. Uh, I don't know if you can see any of the. I'll, I'll gently rotate it see if you can see any of the the figure in the wood but it's been an absolute pleasure to make it for you Leslie and I'll get it posted to you uh, down there in Reading so uh, that's it folks so it's another vampire steak made for a good friend of mine and I hope you've enjoyed joining me this time. Uh, thanks to all my new subscribers, that slowly but surely increasing, and I'm very appreciative of it, appreciative of it all. Uh, and if you've watched this, uh, don't forget to click the like button and any comments you know are gratefully received. And don't forget to subscribe. So. I'll catch you all next time. Bye.